I'm Jillian and welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm making chili. I like to make my chili on Sundays so that I can have chili every day of the week if I want to. I make a big batch, but you at home can always make a smaller batch. So let's get down to it. The first thing I do is add three pounds of ground beef, and I'm using 85% lean, but you can use the beef of your choosing, to a heavy bottomed um, pan. And I use a big pan because I'm making a really big batch of chili. So we'll start it out on medium heat, and all I'm looking to do is brown the meat and add some flavor with it. So first I use one instant pack of chili mix, and you can use any um, heat that you want. I'm using hot because I really like spicy food, but they come in medium and mild as well. So I'll add that to the beef, along with three cloves of crushed garlic. And then, as usual, just salt and pepper to taste. All right, so I'm just going to cook this until it's browned, and then we'll come back and add more ingredients. So the beef is browned, and it looks great, and it smells even better. So next I'm going to add uh, even more spices to this. So I've created a spice blend right here of one tablespoon of chili powder, one tablespoon of cumin, one teaspoon of paprika, one teaspoon of cayenne pepper, a teaspoon of mustard powder, and a teaspoon of crushed red pepper. And then, as you can see, one bay leaf, which, if you can remember, always take out before you eat because you do not want to eat a bay leaf. It's just for flavoring. So I'm going to add that along with one whole box of chicken stock, and that's about 32 ounces. And chicken stock, um, we use that instead of beef stock because it kind of adds a little dimension since we already have beef in the chili. And it's lighter too, which is always nice. All right, so we're gonna add that along with one six ounce can of tomato paste. And we'll mix all this together once we're done adding it. As well as one third cup of olive oil. One large can of crushed tomatoes. And then a little surprise ingredients, what ingredient which really, really makes this chili stand out which is one tablespoon of cocoa powder. And I've made chili without adding this, and it's good, but this just really pushes it over the edge into the great category. So we'll let that all simmer for half an hour, and then we'll add our vegetable ingredients, which is onions, peppers, things like that. But we don't want them to get, you know, too soft, so we'll add that later on. I add also a little something extra to my chili because, I, as I said earlier, I really like spicy food. I add two poblano peppers. And what I do to cook these poblano peppers is simply put them right over the stovetop and let them char until they look absolutely burnt. I then peel off the skin and chop the peppers and add them to my chili. Again, if you're not one for spice, I wouldn't recommend doing this. I would just stick with the bell peppers. But if you really like spice, the poblano pepper is a really tasty, smoky flavor that will really add to your chili. This is how charred the poblano pepper should be. And now what I'm going to do is just take them off the burner and put them in a Ziploc bag for five minutes and let all of the hot steam separate the skin from the pepper. That way, my job is easy of peeling the rest of the skin off. And then I'm just going to dice it and add it to the chili with the rest of the vegetables and beans. The chili's been cooking for half an hour, and as you can see, it has a nice brown hue to it. So next, we're going to add all the vegetables. I've finely chopped one red bell pepper. One green bell pepper.
one whole yellow onion. And if you like your chili chunkier, of course, you can cut them a little bit more coarse. Also, I'm going to add the poblano pepper that I roasted. And if you really like hot chili, I would suggest leaving some of the seeds of the poblano pepper in, because that does add a little bit more heat to it. Next, we're going to add two cans of kidney beans with the bean juice in, because that acts as a natural thickener to the chili. So one, and then the next one. And I'm using dark red kidney beans as well as just regular kidney beans, because I like variety. So get all of that in there. And next we're just going to add a little bit of honey just to sweeten it just a little bit. And careful not to add too much, but a good amount where you can, you know, just flavor the whole thing because it is a big pot of chili. And then probably the most important ingredient is the beer. So we're going to add half a can of beer to this. And we're just going to let that cook for a couple of hours at least until everything's cooked in and it tastes right. The chili is cooked for about three hours on the stove and I've kept it for the most part on low heat because it does tend to burn so be aware you have to constantly stir it. It's time to try it and I'm really excited. This is a good batch of chili. It's really spicy, so just to let you know, if you don't like spice, you don't have to add as much as I did. That's the one good thing about chili, is that it's so versatile. You can make it mild, you can make it hot, you can make it sweet, you can make it savory, however you want to make it. Even if you just like a couple of things that I did, and you add that to your own recipe of chili, it would be really delicious. Well, thank you, and see you next time.